Black holes are where God divided by zero. Albert Einstein Hello, dear friend. In today's video, we would like to tell you about black holes, what they are and what properties they possess. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you can do so now to not miss out on new interesting and informative videos about space and the universe. Now, make yourselves comfortable and let's begin. There are numerous unimaginable rumors, legends and theories surrounding black holes. It's no wonder. After all, we can't directly look into them and test our hypotheses as the laws of nature forbid it. Scientists construct theories that could even amaze science fiction enthusiasts. And yet, it all started quite ordinarily. Three centuries ago, naturalists decided to finally understand what terrestrial gravity is. As known, the first physics, mathematical theory of gravity was formulated by Isaac Newton in 1687. His introduced law of universal gravitation described how bodies interact with each other but didn't explain the nature of this interaction. Even the scientist himself admitted the limitations of his theory. Nevertheless, from Newton's law, if desired, one could deduce unusual consequences. For instance, a rather exotic hypothesis was put forward in 1784 by the English naturalist and theologian John Michel. In a letter to the Royal Society, which was the most influential scientific organization in the world at the time, he presented a calculation of a dark star, a star with gravitational force so strong that its light couldn't escape. It turned out that for our sun to become such an object, it would need to be 500 times larger. Furthermore, Michel speculated that since there are plenty of massive stars in space, among them there must also be dark ones, but due to understandable reasons, we cannot observe them. By the end of 1915, Albert Einstein had formulated a new theory of gravity which became known as the general relativity. He proposed that the action of gravity is not connected to any unknown forces or particles, but is instead determined by the geometric properties of the space-time continuum itself. Any mass bends it, creating a kind of funnel. Around itself, and the motion of bodies relative to each other, is influenced solely by the shape and depth of these funnels. Einstein's concept seemed so revolutionary that the scientific world didn't immediately accept it. One of the proofs for the general relativity could have been the discovery of frozen stars, spherical supermassive regions of space described by Carl Schwarzschild. Unlike Mitchell's idea, in this new model, it wasn't the speed of light that slowed down to zero, but rather the flow of time itself. Schwarzschild introduced the concept of a gravitational radius, which defines the size required for a star to become frozen. The Schwarzschild radius can be calculated for any object. For example, for the Sun, it's about 3 kilometers, for Earth, around 9 millimeters. If there were a physical possibility to compress our star or planet to these sizes without an instant explosion converting matter into energy, they would turn into frozen states and the passage of time on their surfaces would immediately halt. In 1939, Robert Oppenheimer, one of the future creators of the American atomic bomb, and Hartland Snyder demonstrated on a simplified mathematical model that during the collapse of a star, it contracts to its Schwarzschild radius and even overcomes it. The conclusion appeared so fantastic that scientists at the time did not dare to take the next step and declare that frozen stars truly exist. Further research and calculations nevertheless demonstrated that there was nothing incredible about it. Massive stars in all cases transform into frozen states where the force of gravity near them approaches infinity and time comes to a standstill. And most importantly, such objects should be plentiful in the universe, given that its evolution didn't start yesterday. Now, astronomers had the task of confirming or disproving these theoretical calculations. Thus, in 1960, the concept of a black hole emerged. Scientists relatively quickly determined the structure of black holes, which they managed to describe using the general relativity. Within this theory, a black hole is not described as matter or energy, but as a powerful gravitational field concentrated in an immensely curved region of the space-time continuum. Its outer boundary forms a closed surface called the event horizon. From the outside, a black hole behaves like an ordinary cosmic object, albeit an incredibly heavy one. 
If we send a probe towards it, transmitting light signals at regular intervals as it approaches the event horizon, we will notice that the intervals between signals increase as time on board slows down. The wavelength of the light emitted by the probe will rapidly increase, and soon the signal will transform into radio waves and then into low-frequency electromagnetic oscillations, which are almost impossible to detect. Once the probe crosses the horizon, information from the onboard will cease to reach it. Inside the black hole, the probe will begin to fall towards its center, the singularity which, for a non-rotating black hole, is a point, and for a rotating one, a ring. From the perspective of an external observer, the probe will fall towards the center of the hole indefinitely, but in reality, it will be torn apart by the growing tidal forces. This process is called spaghettification. The object sharply stretches vertically and compresses horizontally. Over the decades, scientists have described numerous theoretical models of black holes, and determining which ones are correct can only be achieved through astronomical observation. Since seeing black holes directly is impossible, indirect methods have to be used. For instance, if a massive star is located near a black hole, the hole draws in material from that star. This process is called accretion. In this scenario, an accretion disk forms around the black hole due to its angular momentum, and the gas in the disk accelerates to relativistic speeds and heats up, emitting X-ray. Consequently, the disk and the black hole itself can be detected by an X-ray telescope. Unfortunately, this method makes it difficult to distinguish black holes from neutron stars. Models show that black holes can collide and merge with each other, forming objects with masses in the millions and billions of times that of the Sun. Today, astrophysicists believe that such bodies are situated at the centers of most galaxies, including the Milky Way. Our central supermassive black hole, Sagittarius R, is located in the constellation Sagittarius at a distance of about 26,000 light years. A lot of buzz was generated by the announcement from the Event Horizon Telescope Project's group of scientists. They claim to have obtained the first ever direct image of the shadow of a supermassive black hole. This black hole resides at the center of the galaxy Messier 87, situated in the Virgo constellation, approximately 53.5 million light years away from. It. Against the backdrop of recent discoveries, some cosmologists, after years of attempting to describe the universe using quantum theories, have even begun proposing black holes as the enigmatic dark matter, which constitutes a significant portion of the universe's mass. Furthermore, some astronomers even suggest that our entire universe could be situated inside a black hole, and at its center lies not a singularity, but rather ordinary space. Whether this is true or not remains unknown. Let's wait and see what the data reveal. However, the direct study of black holes is just beginning, and today no one can say where the desire to peer into the bubble of darkness will lead science. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Please write in the comments what you would like to see in our upcoming videos. Thank you and see you next time.